Welcome back, Physics Dirty. This is the second part of the Part B booklet. So we looked at uh, Ohm's law. Now we'll look at resistance and resistivity. So the purpose of resistors in the circuit is to reduce the current going through a circuit and not cause it to heat up. So it could almost be thought of as a safety precaution. Now there are a few things that resistance is related to. This first one is resistance is directly related to the length of the conductor or length of the wire. So that's what this means. As the length increases in length, the resistance increases. So the larger the length of the wire, the larger the resistance. So the longer the wire is, the larger the resistance. Because it makes sense because the electrons have to go a further distance. So current has to go through a larger pathway and uses up energy as it does so. Okay. Uh, Cross-sectional area is what this next one is. And it's inversely related. So R is directly related to 1 over area. The larger the area, the less the resistance because you're making the area big. You can, there's more room for the electron to move. So the larger the area, the smaller the resistance. And that makes sense. Increasing area uh, frees up some movement, so you lose up less energy. Just like hallways in a high school. If we were to make the hallway wider, it'd be easier for students to walk through it versus a very narrow highway or hallway, uh, it would offer a lot, of, a lot of resistance. Temperature, the lower the temperature, the less the resistance, the higher the temperature, the higher the resistance. And you know this from using computers, laptops, cell phones. If your uh, cell phone gets heated up or your laptop gets heated up, it tends to slow down, the, the processor tends to slow down. So that's why we have cooling fans in laptops and computers to cause computers to move, uh, operate more smoothly, more efficiently. So cooler temps cause atoms to slow down and waste less energy. That kind of leads into superconductor when a material is cooled down to almost absolute zero. The theoretical temperature where all m atomic motion stops the resistance would be very close to zero if we could cool things down that much. Resistivity uh, talks about the type of substance it is, whether it's copper wire or aluminum wire. The, conductant, the, the conductive nature of the material used itself. And in the Electricity Duotang, page, four se uh, page 47, discusses some values of resistivity for different substances. So if we were to relate all of these variables together, resistance is equal to, now this is actually the Greek symbol rho. It looks like a P, but it's actually a rho. This is a circle with a line extending down. And length and area, so length is in meters, cross-sectional area is meters squared. Uh, for That means to get the right units, meters and meters will cancel. I'm left with a meter on the bottom. So resistivity must be in terms of ohm times meters. So that meter cancels and we get resistance as a final value. Temperature is not included uh, because resistivity values are at specific temperatures. So this value here kind of takes temperature into account. So if we look at the question, what is the resistance of an aluminum wire that's 0 0.90 meters long, has a diameter of 2.0 uh, times 10 to the minus 3 meters? Note the cross-sectional area, area of the circle there, pi r squared. Now, pi r squared, you need to know what the radius is. If we know what the diameter is, divide that by 2, and that gives you the radius. So that's what we had to do there initially, divide that uh, diameter by 2 to get the radius. Um, so it works out to be 1.0 times 10 to the minus 3. And if we can figure out the cross-sectional area, pi times 1.0 times 10 to the minus 3 all squared, we get 3.14 times 10 to the minus 6 meters squared. And of course I have the length. And looking this up, I'd have to give you this value or give you a chart that has them. 2.82 times 10 to the minus 8 ohm meters. 
So you set up your, your equation. R is equal to rho times L over A. 2.82 times 10 to the minus 8 ohm meters times the length, 0 0.90 meters, divided by 3.14 times 10 to the minus 6 meters squared. And I get 8.1 times 10 to the minus 3 ohms. So make sure you run that through your calculator uh, and get the right answer there. Just be aware, quite often you're given a diameter, you have to change it to radius to get the cross-sectional area. Does the resistance of the wire itself affect the overall resistance? Yes, but it's a very small extent. And uh, if we look at ohmic versus non-ohmic, ohmic are conductors and resistors, they obey Ohm's law, what we had on the previous page. Non-ohmic uh, devices do not obey it, partially because they're getting degraded as they're being used up. For example, light bulb filaments. Okay, lastly, uh, vocab. Series circuit, devices are connected in a single path, and there is only one path for electrons to go. So electrons have to go through this bulb, then this bulb, then this bulb, then they're back at the battery. Parallel circuit, devices are connected in alternate paths, and electrons flow in alternate paths, and we could have one branch that's broken and the other ones will still work. So this one has three different branches. Next. Resistance. Uh, impeding the flow of electrons in a circuit. And they use up energy of electrons. So for example, any device in the circuit, light bulbs, etc., use up energy of the electrons. Conductance. A device's measure of how easily current throws, flows through it. So, for example, copper wire has a high conductance. It allows electrons to flow freely th uh, through it. Superconductivity, material that has its temperature close to absolute zero. And uh, it really allows electrons to flow freely and has very little resistance. So if I had copper wire and really lowered the temperature down, it would it could be super conductive. And I guess that's it. So there you have it. That's part B booklet with the two videos. See you again.